So what was a typical day like robbing trains at Silver Dollar City? Well, let me share one of my typical days. Before I start, I just have two quick things I want to cover. First, thank you to all of my new subscribers. As I'm filming this, I'm about to hit 3,600, which blows me away. So thank you once again to everybody who's joined and subscribing recently. I so appreciate it. I'm so excited by all your support. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to my two new patrons that have signed on in the last couple of weeks. That would be Larry Potter and George Lawden. Thank you again so much for your support. If you want to know more about Patreon and how you can be one of my patrons and help support me, follow the link up top with the card or look for the link at the end of the video and it'll take you right to it. So what was it like to be a train robber in the woods? How did we do it all day? My day would start when I walked into the park and I would typically head over to the employee cafeteria after dropping off my things. Stop in and get breakfast, sit down with my friends, have a great meal. When my wife and kids were working at the park, they would typically join me. That was kind of my breakfast social. That's where I made some of my best friends in the park, people who are still good close friends of mine. And we'd have a great time just starting our day, talking about the news of the day, what was going on in the park. My typical breakfast, I was pretty predictable, would be a scoop of country fried potatoes, three strips of bacon, two sausage patties, some fruit, usually either banana or some strawberries, two eggs fried over medium, and a drink for about $3.30. Find that at your local restaurant. <laughs> yes, yeah, Silver Dollar City's employee cafeteria gave us good food at a good price. and It was a great way to start the day off. After it was done eating, I'd walk over to First Aid, which was right next door to it, pick up our AED. All of us on the train were certified in CPR, just in case of emergency. Walk on down and meet the rest of my buddies who hadn't eaten breakfast with me. And we'd get ready for the day. We'd finish cleaning up the station, get the trash cans in place, get the gun cleaned up to make sure that it was all ready to go for the day. Once we were all set and we were getting ready to go, they'd bring the train around. Now our maintenance guys had already spent time walking all the tracks to make sure they were all clear and there weren't any problems. But we still had to take the train out for a maintenance run just to make sure that it was working okay and there wasn't anything that had been missed. So the robbers would typically hop onto the train for the maintenance run. The conductor would step onto the back of the train and we'd leave one other conductor up at the depot to get it ready and opened up for the guests. And we'd take off around waving at people as we go by. Once the train reached the robber shack, we'd get off, make sure we had everything that we needed, and then it would head back up into town. Robbers, we'd uncover the speakers because we had rain covers that we kept onto them, swept the steps, and head on up into our shack. Now, if you've been on the train, the robber shack may not be the shack you're thinking it is. There's the shack up at the back that is kind of the prop, but it's a fake. The actual robber shack is actually over to the right, just off where you can't see it. There's a little fence around it and some trees that kind of hide it. So it's a little more hidden, but that's actually where we stayed. We would unlock that and walk in and it wasn't a real big room. I think it was like an eight by 10. And typically two guys would be there all day, sometimes three if we had an extra breaker or something like that. Inside on one wall was all our sound system. We had a little miniature fridge, a microwave oven. We had a couple rocking chairs, if you've ever been on the train at Christmas. Grandpa's rocking chair. Yeah, us robbers got to use it the rest of the time. We also had a couple plastic chairs that we keep outside. And if we had somebody else, like we were training somebody, then we would bring in the extra chairs. There was a little round table that we used as our dining table. We also had the donation box there. So whatever people would give to the robbers would typically go into that donation box and it would either get split between purchasing supplies on the train or it would go to Share It Forward, which is a charity that Silver Dollar City runs. The guns and gun belts for the robbers were out there. The guns out there are actually real guns, but they have had lead that has been put into the revolver cells, so they don't work anymore. They can't function. Robbers can't shoot anything. They do actually have a couple starter pistols that work for real, but we really didn't use those unless there was something real special going on. For the most part, the only working gun was actually the conductors, and that was a real 20-gauge shotgun. Yes, it's a real 20-gauge shotgun. We had a radio out there in the shack. The reason we had a radio was there were no phone lines. So if we wanted to know what was going on back in town or in the park, our lifeline was that radio. It allowed us to know what we were doing, if we were on schedule, if there had been a problem. If there was something else that we really had to talk to a conductor about or know something about, the conductor would actually step into their break room up there and give us a call on cell phone. Thank goodness for cell phones. 
I don't know how these poor guys did it in the woods before that. Although years ago, the robber shack actually used to be right up in town, and so they weren't hiding way out there. Well, they probably didn't need cell phones at that point. <laughs> We also had a big jug of water in there that we would fill up each day, and that was pretty much our water supply. Whether it was for drinking or if we needed it for something else, that was the only water we had. There is no running water, there is no sink, there's no hose, there's nothing. In fact, as far as bathroom goes, we actually had a porta potty out there. And depending upon what was happening, that porta potty might be next to the robber shack, or it was way up the hill and in the woods. That would take about three or four minutes to walk up to it. Not very good if you had an emergency. It also meant that we had a couple times where poor robbers got stuck in the porta john way up the hill when the train was coming in. Didn't make the robbery. Poor other robber had to do a solo show, which was not good. The funny thing is, when the grandpas came in at Christmas, it was always right next to the shack. It wasn't a problem for them. Our typical day would be robbing trains. And our day consisted of every time a train came around, we'd be on. And then after it left, we'd be off. Now, that could be every... 30 minutes or every 20 minutes, depending upon how busy we were. If it was slower, usually in the morning, sometimes the very end of the day, or just a plain slow day, which happens sometimes, then the train would go every 30 minutes. But once the lines picked up and it had a little bit of a wait, then we'd speed it up to every 20 minutes trying to get more people through. What that meant was that we basically had two shows. Each show was about 10 minutes long. The longer show for the 30 was probably about 12, and the one for the 20 minute show was about eight. And we would do those shows based on how fast and busy we were. We would also occasionally do a 20 minute show if the weather was bad, if it was really hot and people were miserable, or if the people on the train just were obviously not enjoying it. Well then, you know, fine, get them out, put them out of our misery or vice versa. Because <laughs> we didn't want to keep them out there if they weren't having fun. So if you're wondering, well, what did we cut out? Oh, if you've ever been on the train and you're wondering what happened to the part where the boys are trying to find their ma on the train, that was the part that got cut out and shortened up because it was the easiest thing to cut. So the way it would work is we'd be sitting in the robber shack. We knew about what time the train would leave because it's supposed to leave on the halves if it's on 30s or again every 20 minutes, which would be on the hour, 20 after, 20 till. We'd hear the train coming because you could hear that whistle blowing. A thousand miles. Not exactly, but it's loud. Once we realized it was coming, we'd get our belts, get our hats on, we'd head out the door, and we'd kind of stand in the trees a little bit where the train would go by and see us. And we'd make it look like we were attempting to hide, but not very well, or just kind of staring at them. Let people know we were there. If we were in a little bit of a goofy mood, we might actually go down to Moonshine Stump and sit in the chairs there and look like we're sleeping or do something else real silly. Give people a good laugh. As the train passed us by and went up around the bend, then we get out there, turn the microphones on, and get ready to put on the show. The show for us was what the whole train was about. Yes, the ride in the woods was fun. Yes, it was pretty. But they were out there to see Alfie and Ralphie bowl and make fools of themselves. And we were determined to let them do that and do it the best we could. The more the people on the train enjoyed it, the more we'd throw at them. We had all sorts of extras and options and ad-libs that we could do. And the more they were laughing, the more we would put in and the more we would go. If you were on a 30-minute schedule and you had a really good train, we could sometimes stretch that show out almost 20 minutes. By the time that was over, we'd walk back into that shack and just collapse because we are exhausted. It could physically wear you out sometimes because we'd be having so much going on. And then another 10 minutes later or so, here comes another train. And so it's back up and going again. We typically didn't take lunch breaks during that time that I worked there because we were getting a break every 15, 20 minutes or so. And it might be a 10 minute long break, but spread out, we have more than our lunch time. So we didn't take lunch breaks. Doing those shows would wear you out though. It was so much fun. It was entertaining. And it was exhausting. At least for me, I would be running around out there. If I was getting chased by the conductor, I was running for my life. I'd be running for the guests. I put so much energy into it because the whole goal was to entertain them and get the most laughs out of them that you could. Because if they weren't having fun, there was no point in me being there. So the whole thing was to make sure they had a great time. And it can wear you out over eight to 10 hours of entertaining people. But that's what we did. And we loved it. The end of the day, our last train of the day was always a short 20 minute show because we were getting ready to go home. The guests wanted to get out of the park. We wanted to get out of there. We were tired at that point. After they dropped off the last train load of guests, closed down the train depot, and then the train would come back around for us with one of the conductors on it. Stop at the robber shack. And in that time, we had cleaned everything up. We turned off the sound system. We bagged up all our trash for the day so we could take it out with us because there's no garbage bins in the woods. 
We'd stop and cover up the speakers in case of any weather. And once the train stopped, we'd then hop back on and ride out. <laughs> Worn out, tired, get up to the roundhouse and watch as they park the train, say goodbye to the engineers and everybody else that was there and throw the trash away in the bin, clock out and go home after a long day. So that was a typical day in the life of a train robber. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Post in the comment below. Don't forget to like it and subscribe. Thanks so much.